So the million dollar question is, can you eat food that actually tastes good on low carb lifestyle? I believe you can. I cook almost every single night. So this is not a diet for someone who feels like I don't know how to cook. I'm not going to cook. I don't have the time to cook. You have to make time. You are the most important person in your life. And if you are there for someone else, you have children or family, they need you to be there and they need you to be healthy. It changes the way you feel, the way you, the, how much energy you have, the way you feel about yourself, the way you look. Um, it changes you from the inside out. And I think because I started low carb lifestyle before I actually started with my natural hair journey, it was a lot easier for me to keep from doing a bunch of things with my hair once I did decide on low carb li lifestyle. Or once I did decide on going natural with my hair because I had already started to work on me from the inside out. So maybe that you are the opposite way. You've gone natural with your hair and now you want to eat better. And this would be a great way to, to do that. So I hope this helps. And here are some of the meals I prepared um, on a nightly basis. Okay, so I have a few items from my kitchen, things that I just found around the house. They're items that are in the house. Doesn't mean that I consume them, but they're things that are in the house. Maybe another family member consumes them. And I wanted to show you just in case you have these things around your house so that you can kind of compare and understand um, why certain things are just, you shouldn't include them in your diet at all. And other things, you know, that maybe you're trying to decide which one you should eat you know, kind of give you an idea of which one you may want to lean towards. So I have here some club crackers. And the important thing about this is that the, the serving size on this is four crackers. And it has three grams of fat, 70 calories, and nine carbohydrates, one gram of dietary fiber, one gram of sugar, and then less than one gram of, of protein and four crackers. So for most people, You've been told to look at calories. You would look at this initially and think, ooh, these, this is a low-fat food. But a lot of times, low-fat foods are very high in carbohydrates. And remember, your body stores carbohydrates and turns them into fat. Your body burns carbohydrates and burns the fat off of your body. So your body does not store fat. Your body stores carbohydrates and store carbohydrates turn into fat. So... If you look at this from a carbohydrate perspective, there are nine grams of carbohydrates and just four crackers. So realistically, how many crackers would most people eat in one sitting? Probably between eight and 12 crackers. This amount here is eight crackers. That is 18 grams of carbohydrates and six grams of fat. 18 grams of carbohydrates is a lot for a small snack like this that's barely gonna take up any room in your stomach, especially once you ground this down, and you're gonna be hungry as soon as you consume that. So that's 18 grams of carbohydrates. This small yogurt here, this is an original Yoplait, it says 99% fat free. This is 33 grams of carbohydrates. Okay, but it has five grams of protein, but it says total calories 170, and total fat is 1.5 grams. So, what you should understand with carbohydrates and protein is that your protein, your body is, is uses it to like for your muscles. It helps to build your muscles and, and whatnot. So, um, your the protein grams in, in food you can subtract from your carbohydrate amount. The if there's fiber in it, you could also whatever the total dietary fiber is in something, you can also subtract that from total carbohydrates because if it has protein and has dietary fiber, it's not going towards the total amount of carbohydrates that set your insulin off. That's an important thing you have to understand is that your insulin levels will spike when you take in high carbohydrate or high in sugar foods, like foods that are, are high in sugar, high in carbohydrates, all of a sudden your insulin levels will peak. And that is what tells your body to store the fat. So basically, you can take in higher fatty foods as long as they're lower in carbohydrate. They will not set your insulin level off. 
and your body will not know to store the fat in those foods. So what you want to look for in foods as foods that have dietary fiber, foods that have protein. I try to take in meals for the most part with no more than 65 grams of carbohydrates per meal, complete, like total amount for that meal. If I was in a losing weight mode, probably between 30 and 50 grams of carbohydrates. And that really just depends on how much weight I'm trying to lose, how fast. Um, but just normal, everyday, regular, not thinking about really what I eat. I try to stay within the 60 to 65 range. So that means if this was a meal for me, that would be 33 grams of carbohydrates minus five. So that would be 28 grams of carbs in just one of these yogurts, which is a lot if you are in the trying to lose weight like really, really fast mode. But if you eat this yogurt with an omelet, a bowl of oatmeal, you know, you're okay. But if you eat this yogurt with a bagel, which has, I don't know how many grams of carbohydrates, which, you know what, I'll, I'll put how many grams of carb carbohydrates it actually has right here. If you pair this with that bagel, that's going to spike your insulin up. Your body's going to know that you're taking in lots of sugar, lots of carbohydrates. And guess what? It's going to store the fat. But you take in this yogurt with an egg, some meat, a protein, then your body will be okay with 28 grams of carbohydrates. Because remember, it says 33, but well, you're going to subtract 5 because you have 5 on your side, which is protein. Okay, so another item in my home, which would be these milk chocolate brownies. And... It says two grams of fat, but it has, yeah, two grams of fat for one serving. And it says serving size is one in 20. So about one brownie is the serving size, one square. More, most people have how many? I have two at least. So that would be four grams of fat, which if I was on a low-fat diet, I would think, oh, this is a low-fat food. But when you look at carbohydrates, which is what your body is storing and turning into fat, that's... 23 grams of carbohydrates in one brownie so times two that's 46 grams of carbohydrates there are less than one gram of dietary fiber and one gram of protein so if you were to eat two of these brownies you, you could go ahead and subtract we'll say a total of three so you could subtract two for protein and we'll we'll take one for dietary fiber so out of 46 43 grams of carbohydrates in two of these brownies so that's why it's important if you have a dinner with like a baked potato and, a, you know, let's say you have dinner with baked potato and maybe rice on your plate, the rice and, and a maybe dinner roll, the rice and the dinner roll combined would probably equal two of these brownies. So that's where your substitute comes in. You have to decide, do you want the chocolate brownies or do you want the rice and the bread? Because they both have the same. Which one tastes better? For me, I usually go for the brownies and just throw the bread out take half the rice and I'm okay. I'm still within the range because, you know, I'm not having both. And don't look at it as restricting yourself. The same thing. If you go to a store, you're on a budget, you want two pairs of shoes, but your budget only allows for one. Choose which one you want more. It's not being restrictive. It's being smart. So think of your body as on a budget when it comes to carbs versus, you know, being restrictive and restricting yourself. Another item around the house would be this Sprite. This actually has 100 calories, zero fat, but it has 26 total carbohydrates. So one glass of this, which would be eight ounces, has the same amount as one brownie. Most people don't drink eight ounces. Most people drink 16, 12 to 16. So you probably had, uh, what is that, 52 grams of carbohydrates in one cup. 52 grams in a 16 ounce glass versus the 43 and two brownies. Do you understand now? Are you getting it? So you have to decide which one you want. You're going to have the soda and the brownie and the roll and the rice at dinner. That equals, you know, now we're like really getting up there in carbs and, you know, all of those carbohydrates equal a lot of stored fat. Okay, another thing, which is one of my favorites, just something that I actually eat, would be ice cream. I'm an ice cream lover, okay? Love it, love it, love it. And a lot of people think yogurt is better for you than ice cream, but I have to say I would probably, you know, from a health standpoint, again, I'm not a doctor, but I would have to disagree because the carbohydrate levels in ice cream tends to be a lot lower in the ice cream I eat than a yogurt. 
So here we have this six ounce cup of yogurt that has 28 grams after you take away your protein, right? But here you have your ice cream for half a cup serving. It would be 18 grams of carbohydrates minus two grams of protein. So it would end up being 16 grams of carbohydrates. If I went ahead and ate two serving sizes, so I had a whole one cup of this ice cream, that would equal 32 grams of carbohydrates minus the four protein. So we would end up with 28. So 28 and 28, about the same, but you'd get more ice cream for a snack than this yogurt. But another, you know, comparison would be, okay, so here you are, you have, say you decided you wanted three times the normal serving size of ice cream. So that would be 54 grams of carbohydrates if you had three serving sizes. 54 grams of carbohydrates for three serving sizes versus 52 grams of carbohydrates for one 16 ounce glass. Now do you understand? If you have both of these together you might as well just throw your hands up because it's just pretty hard to bounce back. You know if this is like your daily routine every day you're not willing to give them up both, both of them up. This right here is the devil to me. Like you get rid of this alone this is like five pounds a year at least without even blinking your eyes. Remember you're kind of trying to trick your insulin. So when you eat foods that are high in protein, high in carbohydrates, and you couple them with foods that are very high in sugar, high in carbohydrate, it, your insulin goes crazy and it will store the fat. But if you try to stay in that range below about 40 grams of carbohydrates, then it's not such an alarm to your system that says, oh my God, they're eating, you know, 117 grams of carbohydrates. Thank you. Thank you.